What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 77 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at Fog. First, we're going to look at a simple way that we can set up Fog to appear on our map. Then after that, we're going to make a new Fog graphic for our map. And then after that, we're going to go even further and make an advanced Fog graphic for our map, where the Fog will actually match the layout of our map. And then after that, we're going to be looking at how we can manipulate the Fog on our map using events. With all that said, let's get into it. So what I've got here is just the base version of Pokemon Essentials uh, V18. I'm looking at Route 1. I've added a little cave area here to it. And inside here is a new map that I've made just called Small Cave. And what I would like is for Small Cave to be a little bit darker, a little bit dimmer. Not necessarily a dark map that requires flash, but just a little bit dimmer. We can actually set that up by using fogs, and we can make our map look pretty nice. So what we want to do first and foremost is we want to make a new event on our map. And what we want to do is just insert a new event command here. And it's on the second page. It's this option here called Change Map Settings. Then we want to select Fog Graphic. And right here, by default, we don't have too many uh, very good options. We're going to make our own new option eventually. Um, but right now, let's just select, I don't know, how about Portal? You can click and drag this hue slider here to adjust the color of the fog. Um, let's just make it, uh, I don't know, blue. This is not going to look very good, but this is just a basic way to get started here for fogs. You can adjust the opacity, you can adjust the blending mode. I would recommend keeping it at normal because add and sub can look a little bit strange, but hey, mess around with the settings and see what you like. You can adjust the zoom here as well. Later we're going to be using um, fogs with a lower zoom of 100, but if you want you can blow this up and make it massive. What this will do is it will make your fog graphic appear bigger in game. You can also adjust the speed on the x-axis and the speed on the y-axis. So this is SX. If we set this to 1, the graphic will slowly move to the right in game. We'll see it slowly drift to the right. If we increase this to like 5, then it will be moving much faster to the right. Later, we could use this to actually make clouds, and I'll show how to do that in a little bit as well. But uh, yeah, you can make things move by adjusting these values here. I'm just going to keep them at zero, because once again, this is going to be a very basic setup for our fog. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to make it so that way this actually works in our game. Uh, right now, it's set to action button, so right now nothing will happen when we walk onto this map. But let's make this auto run. So now, when we enter this map, this will automatically run, and it will set our fog graphic for our map. Then, the next thing that we want to do is we can just run the erase event command here. What erase event does is it removes this event until we leave the map and come back. So whenever we step foot in this map, it will change our fog graphic, and then the fog graphic setter event will just disappear. And then if we leave and come back, then it will do that once again. So let's showcase this in-game now, shall we? Here I am on my Route 1 with my lovely little cave. Let's go inside here and let's take a look at our fog. Wow, look at that. That's uh, not great, but it is a start. We can see the kind of like blue circles for our fog graphic. What if we just wanted to make it appear a little bit dimmer in our cave? Well, we can do that by making our own custom new fog graphic. And then after that, we're going to make another custom fog graphic, and it's going to be great. But first, what we can do is we can just really make a custom small one here. Let's just do like 40 by 40. Since they tile, that this doesn't matter too much. What we could do is make this larger. We could make this 64 by 64, but whatever. And let's just make it kind of like a, like a pure black square, really. Ta-da! Perfect. And let's go and let's save this in our game's fog folder. What you want to do is you want to go to the root folder and go to graphics and then fogs. These are all the graphics that are just within the fogs folder. And we could just call this, I don't know, dark square. There we go. So let's tweak the settings for our map so that way it's using that dark square graphic. We can instead go and select dark square. There it is. We can increase the um, opacity if we want the map to appear even darker. So let's set that to 100. Uh, opacity caps out at 255. So if we set this to 255, our map will actually be pitch black when we walk in, which is kind of funny, but, you know, maybe <laughs> it's not very player friendly. So let's avoid doing that. Um, but yeah, now when we step foot on this map, it'll just appear a little bit darker. Since it's using pitch black, the hue setting doesn't matter too much. Um, but uh, here we go. Let's take foot now in our darker cave. See, it's a little bit darker. 
it's just a little bit darker. What we can do is crank up that opacity even more. Let's see what it looks like when our cave is really dark. And then after that, let's try making a custom graphic for our fog in our cave that is like darker on the outsides, but brighter on the insides. I think that'd be really cool. Let's make it so that way it's like brighter in the central area of our cave and darker on the outer areas. I'll show you how you can do that in just a little bit. And then we're gonna do it on the outside route as well. We're gonna set up some fogs here on route one and it's gonna be great. All right, let's take a look at our cave now. It should be even darker. Look at that. Now our cave is even darker. We don't require flash and it's not like a perfect pitch black circle around our, our, around our player, but the cave is noticeably dimmer than normal. Let's just go and set this to action button so we can compare. Now the fog will not be applied when we enter the cave. So let's take a look and uh, see how this looks now. I'm gonna walk into cave one once again, and this is what our cave looks like with no fog. Very, very bright. It's kind of cool. All right, so now let's make a custom fog graphic for our cave that kind of matches the layout of our cave. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna take a note of how big the map is. Here in the bottom right, we can see that this, ma uh, this map eh, is 20 by 20. It's perfect, it's very easy. This is a perfect square, so we don't have to do too much math here. What we wanna do is we want to make a new graphic here that matches that, but multiplied by 32, because every tile is 32 pixels. What we could also do is multiply by 16 and then increase the scale to 200, but then it starts getting a little bit confusing. I'm just gonna do 20 by 32, which is 640. So let's make a 640 by 640 graphic here, and let's set it up so right now at the very start, it's perfect, like a pitch black, and then what we can do is start drawing the light areas around it. So the way that these uh, graphics work for fogs is the like the more white it is, the brighter it is, and then you can go on this spectrum from white to gray all the way down to black here. But if you want it to be dark, what you could do is you know just do a square like this, which is of course <laughs> this is some fantastic artwork here. But then if you wanted to have an even brighter area, you could make it like white like here like this. And this is going to look pretty bad when we put it on our map. So what I would recommend that you do is you also apply a Gaussian blur or some sort of blur to your image. So that way the colors kind of bleed together. Just for the uh, sake of example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two different fog graphics here. I'm going to call this cave one. And this is the fog without any blur applied. Now I'm going to go to filter up here and apply a Gaussian blur. What I do is I just like to go to Gaussian Blur and adjust it. Maybe 36 is a bit too much, but you know, we could bump it up so it's like 16.8 pixels radius of our Gaussian Blur. And look at that, that looks a bit better. What I've usually been doing for my uh, fogs, I did this in Pokemon Splice, was I just alternated between kind of like a medium gray and black, so that way it's still like decently dark, but noticeably brighter in some other areas. What you could do also, if you want, is make it so that way instead of like black and gray you can use different colors for example if you wanted to make an ice cave and you wanted it to feel kind of cool and cold you could kind of use like a darker blue like this and then maybe fade into like light blue and then go into white or heck you could even fade into an even lighter blue you can get really creative when it comes to fogs so let's just make this one and call it cave three Actually, I haven't applied the uh, blur to this one yet, so let's just do that real quick. There we go. This will be cave three. Now, let's set up some events in our map so that way we can swap the fogs. It's going to be pretty dang cool, let me tell you. Let's make a new guy right here, and let's just make you a berry tree. And let's make it so that way when you are talked to, what you will do is you will change our map settings and change the fog graphic to use cave one. Now remember, we set this up so it's 20 by 32. That means that it's gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio with our map. So we need to actually lower this zoom to be 100. There we go. And let's just go to like 74 opacity. Bada boom. So this will set it so that way it's using cave one whenever we interact with this bush. Now let's make another bush over here. And let's make it use a different graphic too, just for organizational purposes. I don't know, it doesn't really matter too much. 
Now let's make this one use Cave 2, so now it'll be a little bit blurrier. And let's copy and paste, and let's make you use Cave 3 now. Perfecto. And let's make you use another berry as well. Cool. Now, let's actually delete this, so that way all of the fog setting is done by these three events within our cave. And let's take a look at how each of them looks. Let's get in there and take a look at our cave fog, shall we? So right now, this is what our map looks like with no fog. It's very bright. Let's interact with this guy. Interesting. So as you can see, this doesn't look great, but there's clearly a lighter area into a darker area into the darkest area out in the outer perimeter of this cave. Let's take a look and see how this looks in game with a little bit of blur applied. Now that looks a bit better. It's not as noticeable, see? There's like a sharper line here. If you really want to add a sharper line in your game, you can do it this way. But I kind of prefer those softer edges. I feel like that looks a bit more natural. Now let's take a look at this one where it's blue. Interesting. So now our cave is blue and it's kind of like got that cold feel to it. What we can do is we can tweak the opacities for these. We can make it so that way this is a bit darker. I believe in Pokemon Splice for some of my caves. I set them up so that way the opacity was like 120 and they look dark as heck when you go into those caves. I think one of them was named Dark Cave. But anyway, that is a simple way to set up some fogs that match the layout of our map. Now look at that. That looks a bit better when it's set to darker there. So we have a brighter area here and the darker area. That's looking pretty decent. Okay, now let's start setting up some fogs outside for Route 1. What we could do, if we're a little bit crazy, is we could do that same event structure where we have auto run and we just set the fog. But I don't recommend that because this map right here has map connections. This connects to a town here and connects to a town up here. And those don't necessarily play nice with using auto run fog setter events because the fog will then also apply to the other maps. I'll show you uh, an example of this, and then what we will do is set up the events differently so that we can correct that behavior. So let's just do an auto run fog. Uh, let's just use our dark square here. Actually, no, let's use these explosions because those look crazy. And let's make them 300 so they're big. This way it'll be noticeable. And then what we can do is call the erase event command here. So. If we are on route one, we will see our explosion particles here as our fog. Look at that, it looks kind of crazy. If we go down here to Lapit Town, we will continue to see them. And that kind of looks crappy. We just walked into a whole new town and it looks bad. What we could do is transfer maps and come on back and take a look. Right now we don't see it, but once we get close enough to our map once again, or rather once we set foot in that map, bada boom, you got the explosion graphics. Kind of looks crappy. So I have a fix for this, and this is set up just by doing some eventing. What we want to do is we actually want to keep this event with the auto run, but we just want to tweak it a little bit, and then we want to create some new events as well. So instead of loading in our graphic when we set foot on this map at opacity 64, let's set it up so that way when we set foot on this map, it loads in our fog at opacity 0. Now, what we can do is we can use other events. I haven't talked about these yet in the tutorial, but here we are. There are additional events that you can use for editing your fog. They are change fog color tone and change fog opacity. With this, you can change the color of your fog. <laughs> Self-explanatory, right? And you can change the opacity of your fog. And you can even add a little bit of a, uh, a delay in frames. So what we could do is make it so that way by default, when we first enter our map, our fog is shown at opacity zero. We can't see it. But we could make an event that when our player touches it, it changes our fog opacity to, say, 64 over the course of, I don't know, let's make it eight frames. So that way, when we step foot a little bit further in our map, our fog will appear. And then what we should do is also make it so that way when we leave our map, the fog disappears. So let's make it so that way this goes to opacity zero over the course of eight frames on player touch. Copy paste, copy paste, bada boom. And we could also set this up here on the other exit. We should make it so that way the zero is closest to the map connection and then the fade in to a higher opacity is a little bit later in the map. And you can tweak these to your liking, but essentially this makes it so that way when we first step foot on our map, it's opacity zero. And then as we walk into our map a little bit later, 
then the opacity is set properly. Now check this out. Whoa! Fade out. Now we're stepping foot on our map for the first time. There's no fog. And there it is. Now there's fog. And let's go and leave our map now and see how this looks. Hey! And then we can enter Sudolan City here and everything looks just fine. We get to listen to that horrible uh, MIDI sound also. Anyway, now we're walking back down to Route 1 and we see our fog once again. Now, let's save and close our game. The main issue with this was that I set up the, um, I was saved somewhere else in the map besides where the map connections were, but the fog will actually persist if you save and then close and reload. Now check this out. There's our fog once again. As long as you set this up so that way these show up in the proper like map connection entrances and exits, then your fog will be looking spiffy. I actually think I even want to take this and set this up for one of my uh, other games. I think the fog looks pretty cool, but there are still some other things that I want to change. I think that it would be cool for us to set up a custom fog for this map. Let's set up a fog using the technique that we used earlier. The thing is, we're going to have to do different dimensions. This map is 48 by 24, so we need to make a new file here. Let's do this. File new. And I believe that the uh, dimensions are going to have to be 1536 by 768. There we go. This roughly matches the dimensions of our map. So what we could do is we can actually go and we can basically uh, screen grab this and throw this into Photoshop here. And we can kind of get a feel for how we would like the fog to look on our map. Ta-da! It's perfect! Now let's make a new layer up above all this. And let's just fill everything in with, say... Uh, I guess I could just do like pitch black for this. Oh, oops, I have the eraser tool selected. There we go! Now let's lower the opacity on this a little bit so we can kind of see where we want our fog to be. Now... Let's go in and draw... Actually, let's put this on top. There we go. This is going to be a bit better for us when we're uh, drawing in our new fogs. We want this to be opacity 100. There we go. So let's make it so that way we have a light gray path that flows from the entrance like so. And let's actually increase the, uh, the size here. Let's make it flow from the entrance like so and kind of follow this path like that. Ta-da! Then we could even make this flow to our cave and then flow up over here to this house and even like accompany this. There we go. That doesn't look necessarily fantastic, but what we have here is a new custom fog that kind of matches the general layout of our map. We could even add some more like brightness here. Ta-da! Now, let's add a quick Gaussian blur once again, because you know me, I do love my Gaussian blurs. And we'll just call this, not cave, we'll call this root one. After this, I'm going to show how to do um, clouds as well, because I think those look pretty cool. So let's just go and set it up so that way the graphic, instead of using explosion, uses root one. Okay. I also realized that the zoom for this fog was also set to 300 before. And since we're trying to do a one-to-one -one thing here for our fog, we need to lower this down to 100. So now that the zoom is 100 and the opacity is increased a bit, the fog should now accurately match the layout of our map, and it should look pretty dang cool. So let's go and turn our fog on, and look at this. It doesn't look great when loading into another map here, because, like I said, the map connections keep the different fog graphics on map transfer, but look at this. We've set up a custom fog that kind of matches the general flow of our map. What I would recommend doing is if you plan to use this for a route that has map connections, make sure that the fade in and fade out occurs um, with a good distance away from the map transfer, or rather from the map connection, because that just doesn't look too great. What, what you could do is set this up in like a forest and make it so that way you have to transfer into the forest. The fogs also work really well for caves. Anyway, now that we've got this set up and it works, uh, what I would like to do now is I would like to also set up some clouds for our map. So what we can do is we can actually just take this um, same format if we want, and we could start drawing in some clouds. What we could do is also just make a new graphic. This doesn't particularly look great if you use a very small graphic. So what we should probably do 
is make a newer graphic or you know what actually for this for the sake of this example what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to use the uh graphic from our previous example where it matched the size of the map so now what i would like to do is i would like to make this bait 100 transparent and then above everything i would like to add some slightly dark gray like little clouds and i'm not the best at drawing clouds you know you could draw something like this if you want you could just draw little like bits. Um, you know, just for the sake of our example, I'm just gonna draw some really crappy clouds real quick. What we can do is take this, copy it and paste it, and really just kind of, you know, make a couple cloud examples. I'm not the best artist, but I can definitely set up some clouds to appear in our map at least. So now that we've got our really crummy clouds, let's just go and call this clouds. Um, I think it would look a little bit better if I applied a Gaussian blur to it. I feel that way about basically everything though, but let's apply a light Gaussian blur. I actually need to merge these layers first before I apply a Gaussian blur, so... Now that I've got all of my clouds selected, let's blur them up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Maybe that's too much, you know, something like that. Yeah, I think that'll look okay. That'll look okay. So, let's call this clouds.png. Now, let's go into our map. And you know what? Let's actually just make it so that way there's an auto run here. I know that this is uh, against what I was saying earlier, but for the sake of an example, I just want to display these clouds immediately. So let's just make it so they're a bit like a bit higher in opacity. Let's lower the zoom down to 100. And let's make it so that way they move a little bit. We, they are going to have some X movement. Let's make them have a movement value of 4. I think this might look a little bit too fast, but let's see. Real quick, you want to make sure that you don't have two of these auto run events running. Um, I'm just going to delete this other one. So now all that's left is our cloud fog. And we have to make sure that we also run the erase event afterwards. If you do auto run without the erase event, your game will just kind of freeze. And that doesn't look too great. So make sure that you erase the event after the fog is set. And now let's take a look at our clouds. Look at that. They're moving. And they're kind of uh, blurry and they're kind of big, but take a look at that. There's a cloud just kind of drifting over to the right. So let's increase the opacity of our clouds now from 120 to say, I guess 200 and see how those look. The zoom is at 100, which is the lowest that it can be. What we could do is also like, let's try increasing the speed and let's even increase, uh, actually, no, let's make them go to the left now actually. And we can make them go down a little bit even as well. We can mess around with our clouds a lot this way, which is kind of cool. So now let's run our game and take a look at what it looks like with our clouds being a little bit darker here. And they're flowing to the left and they're going down a little bit as well. So this way you can add movement. Um, you can do different things with fogs to make things look pretty good. I personally prefer to use fogs in caves and maybe like match the layout of the cave. But this way you can actually set up fog for a map outside as well. Let's go back into our cave once more and take a look at everything. Because I think that looks pretty cool. Kind of like a dark blue, darker like this. Yeah. You can set up some nice fog graphics for your game this way. Anyway, I think that about does it for this tutorial. Um, I want to say thank you so much once again for watching. I appreciate you and I hope that you learned something from this, even though I did stumble around a little bit. Um, be sure to follow on Twitch. And um, yeah, thanks once again, all you guys, for all your support. I really appreciate you. And until next time, I hope that you all have a good one.